beginning means that we continue working on our life and the mind and behavior and attitude so that this mind is not dictated by the world outside. So when the mind is not dictated by the world outside, the peace and the happiness will reflect, will manifest into your mind in all those situations. But if you forget them, question is how we forget. It's, it, it has nothing to do with any blind belief. I don't never say that you believe me. I say you ask your questions, as many questions as possible to, so that the things become clear to you. You know, this mind, this instinctive mind, this habitual mind, we already understood that this mind lives in five subjective states. So when the three subjective states of wandering, forgetfulness and obsessed mind takes control of my life, that mind becomes a tiger and that, that tiger causes the problem. But why is that tiger? So there was a master in the forest. He used to meditate every day and he has acquired many powers. I will talk about that briefly, that how the meditation gives you a lot of powers. It helps you to read the mind of others easily. But it's not required when we are living in peace and happiness, what I have to do with others. But anyhow, this master was meditating one day and the mouse was hiding under his cloth, under his dress. So he opened his eyes and he saw the cat in front of the him. Oh, mouse is scared because of the cat. The master has powers. Master converted that mouse into a cat so that the fear should go away. So the cat started playing around the master. So one day he was meditating and the cat started hiding behind him, behind his back. He opened his eyes and he saw the dog. The master converted the cat into a dog. Well, yeah, he has the powers. Again, after a few weeks, he was meditating because he has a, such a great aura. When you have, you develop by regular practice of meditation, a very strong aura around your body even the tiger and the lion cannot touch you. Uh, it takes time. But I'm not going to any house. So master was meditating and the dog hiding behind his back. He opened his eyes and he saw the tiger is there. So he converted the dog into a tiger. Problem is solved. Tiger started, you know, living around the master. And one day what happened? Tiger became an angry and attacked the master. So before he could attack on his neck, the master converted the tiger again into mouse. What is this mouse and the tiger in us? 
Mind says, I don't like you, so it comes and goes. But when the mind is constantly thinking, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. So I, I, I have a feeling of reaction and detachment and hatred and the jealousy. Hatred and the jealousy is burning in my mind. That is the tiger. Then any time that person comes in front of me, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to be anxious. I'm ready to react. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. We should not make our mouse inside a tiger. The moment it becomes a tiger, this whole world becomes full of complaint, blame, com reaction, anxiety, duality, conflict, problem, suffering. We are responsible for it. None else. We made the mouse tiger. Are you understanding? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now link it. The first three subjective states of the mind, the wandering mind, and obsessed mind becomes the tiger. And when it becomes the tiger in me, I am constantly crying, blaming, complaining, reacting, frustrated. Never do that. Don't make the mouse tiger. Do you like this too? Yeah. yeah. So when sibling, when your sibling gets upset, don't get influenced. Don't allow the mind to be start wandering, getting obsessed. Don't forget these principles. Remain calm, unattached. When they calm down, then you can explain. But question is how I don't intend to uh, make the mouse a tiger. It means these three subjective states to constantly live within me, haunt me, so that my behavior and attitude changes. How it happens? Do you have any answer? How it happens? Why I want to react? Why I react to you? No, example. I never reacted okay. to you. Why people react? They react. It's a practical experience. Or dad, or mom, or siblings, or friends. A lot of people. We have we have seen it. We have experienced it. We cannot say it doesn't happen. It happens. Question is why it happens. Since our childhood, we lived with our parents, our siblings, our friends, in the school, the society, the culture, the parents and the friends and the relations, the way they behave and react. It, it, it has an impression on my mind because I did not learn. I should not be influenced by these impressions from the world, but it did not happen since our birth. When we start learning the Eastern wisdom, then we realize that we should be aware that these three states of the mind should not be made a tiger. So the, all those impressions in my mind accumulates, multiplies, 
and then we start reacting in the world we should not have been. It comes by a constant thinking of others. You need not to think of anyone else outside. We have three siblings, yeah? So any you, the moment you start thinking a lot about your sibling, your mind will start thinking of likes and dislikes. You will definitely say, I like this thing of number one sibling. I don't like this thing of the second sibling. Third sibling, your mind naturally starts. We should love, we should respect, we should adore every human being, but we should not start thinking in terms of the likes and dislikes. Are you getting it? Yeah. yeah. So, but if we keep on thinking like likes and dislikes, attachment and detachment have takes place, mind is constantly thinking, and then it causes a desire, anxiety, duality, blame, complain, and all the three subjective states of the mind returns to me. Did it happen before we started our journey together that one day you did not sleep because of your sibling? You had a reaction, mm -hmm. you have an anger, you have an hesitation. It happened. So the moment it happens, it is because of three subjective states of the mind. You change the mind, it stops. <laughs> We have already covered extensively the three subjective states of the mind. Wandering mind is not able to pay attention to that event or that person clearly, so it forgets the main principle of Eastern wisdom, and then the mind is dictated by the outer influence, by the outer world, maybe a person, an event, or incident. It takes time. And same thing with the forgetfulness. Forgetfulness means also means that I listen, I see the event incident outside half-heartedly, not fully conscious, not being aware. And the obsession is always causing a lot of challenges in our life. So, you know, in ancient India, uh, our masters have a preference of farming the cows. You know the cows? <laughs> so, most, not in all monasteries, but in majority of the monasteries in India, there is a head monk, then there are student monks, and then we have hundreds of cows. They extract the milk and they sell some of the milk outside and ultimately whatever the milk they consume in order to continue their practices within the premises of the monastery. But then there are real masters who don't farm these cows. Their main focus is on the knowledge. On the way, you know, I we meet and I start talking of the knowledge. We don't talk of here and there, other issues, not interested. We are focused. My master used to be focused, but anyhow, one master was there and uh, approached by one student. So in the ashram, in the monastery, 
that student has to go to a nearby village to beg food for the master and for himself because it was in the forest. Why I'm telling a story that how a very small thought in the wandering state with an obsessed mind, with a forgetfulness mind can cause a big problem. So after a few weeks, the student <coughs> asked the master that uh, if we have, if we can farm even a single cow, we will have some milk. So I will not be, I will not be forced to go to the village. Master said yes. So the student got a cow. He's now he was devoting 100% of his time and effort in learning the Eastern wisdom, yoga, meditation. But now half of the time is divided to taking care of the cow. So the moment your mind, my mind, your mind, our mind, starts thinking about others in terms of the likes and dislikes, half of our time is wasted. Are you with me on this story? Mm -hmm. So now half of the time he has to spend to take care of the cows. So after, after a few months, the cow has a baby cow. After a few years, He has 10 cows plus 10 babies, lot of milk. So he was devoting first the 100% of his time and effort in learning, in changing himself. So once he has one cow, he was almost 50% of his time was taken. <clears throat> now he has 10 cows. He has no time left to practice meditation, to understand this knowledge. Ten years passed and he went to the master. He said, I've been practicing daily. Why there is no change taking place? Can you answer me? Why? Change is not taking place. Even after, he was doing regular practice, but his mind was constantly thinking about the cows. How much money, how much milk, how much milk I have to sell, how much money. His mind was totally engaged the same way. Our mind, the moment this mind starts thinking about others, the word, it causes a lot of challenges to our mind. It is because of the three subjective states of the mind. You see, we, we, many people, many people complain, I've been doing the practice for how many days? I've been doing the practice for so many years and there is no change. It is because of this. Did you understand? Mm -hmm. So while practicing meditation, while listening, our knowledge, because we have to repeat this knowledge by listening and learning again and again, so that this mind becomes clear in peace and happiness, in love and wisdom. That is the reason it might be happening because, why it is happening? Because your mind is absorbing this knowledge clearly. Two stories understanding the nature 
why people say my mind is wandering on this issue or that issue because my mind worked for many months and days together on a particular thought it was repeated again and again i was not aware so it was absorbed by the three subjective states of the mind that is why the mind starts wandering and it causes problem suffering hatred jealousy reaction anxiety and anger against the world last week we worked on power of speech what you know if you are not able to express what you know people will not recognize what you know did you understand that point you have read all the books you know everything but if you cannot express it how the people will know that you know you know i know that so we are working on the power of speech and the communication because if you can speak softly gently one in a coherent way, manner two in a systematic and organized manner three if you are able to express your knowledge in thought it inspires other people it gives you a joy that you have expressed the knowledge it also helps others that gives you a satisfaction money is prime second <laughs> no or yes <clears throat> and the most important part in this journey is that we know these mantras mm -hmm. it is not that you have to read the entire chapter that contains 50 pages then you have to create a bullet points then you have to talk about it you have to simply remember the mantra and then start speaking and you remember the mantra as also i know that so we know the mantra we know the meaning and then we also know the knowledge in the mantra what is left i told you last time what is confidence you have a knowledge you have a power to express it and you express it that is confidence do you lack confidence no no oh, good i wanted to hear that so then we we know the knowledge we have a power of expression i think your native language is english mine i have a secondary language even then i'm speaking in english even if i pronounce some words wrongly mentally i know you you realize oh, oh the, what this word means is not speaking correctly so knowledge second is how principle thought word meaning and the knowledge then thinking in terms of what why how where and when i told you last time and then you start expressing why we are doing it because siena must be a good communicator good speaker with the right knowledge I want to see in future 
that she becomes a great speaker. Why speaker? Because you have to express your knowledge. Do you want to do that? So there is no fear and we want to do that. Just go through the first four sutras. Just remember the first sutra, Athi Yoga No Shashana. And in your mind, a uh, discipline and education of yoga, that is mindfulness, is the journey. Second bullet point in your mind. Uh, this Ath Yoga No Shashana. Ath means the seeker. You just, you know, think in your mind. Ath means the seeker. And then uh, yoga here, the master is talking about the five subjective states of the mind. The first three subjective states of the mind we cannot achieve. We cannot discover the real self. It is the cause of majority of the problem. Ath Yoga Nushashana. Second sutra, if you go through it, it means yoga chitta vratti nirodha. Yoga is emptiness, emptying the mind of its content. So we take the meaning of yoga, not a popular notion, bullet point first. Yoga is mindfulness, the highest state of meditation. We can achieve the highest state of meditation in the fourth and the fifth subjective state of the mind. Now you are just recalling the bullets. Okay. Chitta vratti nirodha. Oh, when we empty the mind of its contents coming from the first three subjective states, the wandering, forgetful and obsessed state of the mind, then this mind becomes empty and reveals peace and happiness. What is the third sutra? Tadadrashtu swarupe avasthanam. Oh, then, then, we are settled, uh, we are settled in real self. We discover real self. We find real self. And the real self is made up of peace, happiness, love. And peace. But when people do not reach to that yogic state or meditative state, that is the fourth sutra. That is the fourth sutra. Tada Dreshtu Sarupya is the second. Ah, what is the fourth sutra? Vritti Varupya So when the mind is not living in a meditative state, it means by default it is living in wandering, forgetfulness and obsessed. So you have recalled it in your mind. So with that recollection, you have the knowledge. You know English language definitely better than me. You have a power of communication. Second thing is power of expression. You just speak out. You need not to worry, need not to think after we both are together here. No third one is there. <laughs> I'll improve upon. And you can start from where whatever the thoughts about yoga comes to your mind. Yoga is very popular in the world today. Not a single country we find that people do not practice yoga. I have an information, so I'm repeating that information. More than a billion people practice yoga in almost every country in the world in one form or the other. Some. You see that how I'm building a story? Just pay attention. So in one or the other form of yoga, I mean uh, as if you are communicating to the people. 
to your students, to the audience, to your dad and mom, that when I say some form or the other form of yoga, I mean to say that some people only practice physical, other people practice breathing, another group of the people only practice relaxation, and uh, then there are other people who practice meditation. So they are all yoga. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, you are communicating, I'm talking about the very soul of yoga. We will understand how, what is the exact goal of yoga. Now if you remember, you can add my friend. The goal of yoga is to make us a better human being. Why better human being? Because we all human beings have a real self that is of the nature of peace, happiness, love and wisdom. So you see that oh, everyone, every human being has the real self, the same real self. The goal of yoga is to discover that real self, which is of the nature of peace and happiness, love and wisdom. So now you can even say, you know, the first, the Yoga Sutra was written by a master, Patanjali, 2,600 years ago. You see that? You have a right knowledge and you are expressing it. Uh, so he wrote the Patanjali Yoga Sutra in the form of formulas. And these formulas needs to be opened and that is what I'm going to do. So the first sutra, sutra means the formula, the compressed knowledge in a phrase, like the chemistry formula. So the first sutra is Athi Yoga Nushashanam. So that literally, that simply means that first we have to become a seeker. When we are a seeker, we are qualified to learn and treat the path of yoga. The master says that the word yoga, the real notion of the word yoga is the highest state of meditation. Popular notion is physical exercises. Yes, they are also the part. They should also be practiced. But for the sake of meditation, we should not ignore huh? we should not ignore meditation for the sake of physical breathing and other practices. So you are talking as if you friendly talk. What I was talking is that when yoga is the highest state of mindfulness, it pertains to the mind. So the wonderful understanding of the Eastern psychology or yoga is that this mind lives in five subjective states. Wandering mind, forgetfulness mind, uh, obsessed mind, one-pointedness, and empty. As long as this mind lives in the first three states, we cannot achieve, we cannot attend the real self, we can never be in peace and happiness. Are you listening? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Just five to 
maybe in the beginning you can speak for two minutes, but I'm summarizing so that you can have a lot of thoughts in your mind. I'm passing on these thoughts into your head. So the first three states prevents the mind to recognize and realize our real nature. Hence, we have to empty the mind of its content. And that is what is explained by the Patanjali in the next sutra, Yoga Chitta Vratti Nirodha. Yoga is emptying the mind of its content. Contents are many. If there is any content created by the one-pointedness, it gives us the right knowledge. You have not studied, you have not heard this before. If the content is created by the wandering mind, the mind is always getting disturbed, feel fatigue. If the mind is dominated by the obsessed or the forgetfulness mind, it can cause blame and complain and reaction. That is why Patanjali says, the master says, we have to empty the mind of its content to attain the highest state of meditation and mindfulness. If you do not understand. If you don't agree, just tell me. Interrupt me. I like interruption. So what happens when we empty the mind of its content? That is explained by the Patanjali in the third sutra. Tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. That means I am settled in real self. That also means that I recognize the real self. That also means I attain real self. And the real self is made is nature of peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom. Hence, we find our real self that expresses through the mind that expresses our thought, speech, and action, we become a better human being. How long it takes? No, don't, don't ask me in terms of the time. Continue the journey. Be a better person, then do professional work. Be a better person, then treat your siblings in a better way. I remember I was in Indonesia long back when in 1998. So one person asked me, I'm, I'm a Christian, can I practice yoga? I said, yes, if you practice yoga, you become a better Christian. You're a student, you practice yoga, you become a better student. You're a teacher, you practice yoga, you become a good teacher. You're a husband, you practice yoga, you become a better husband, better wife, better sibling. You know, sometimes people relate yoga with religion. So when we do not, re when we do not practice meditation, our mind continues to wander in the first three subjective states, and that is why. Every day, more or less, we sometimes we become upset, sometimes we have a pleasure, sometimes we are feeling sleepy, sometimes we are lazy and crazy. That is how we pass every day in our life with a lot of challenges. In the beginning, 
when we start practicing, or you can add, you can practice a couple of postures, maybe one or two or three minutes of breathing, then do the relaxation, and ultimately sit in meditation. So when you start following this discipline, again, go back to the main, main question, your occurrence of these three states of the mind becomes less and less in your life. What are the occurrence? Occurrence of wandering mind, occurrence of obsessed mind, occurrence of forgetfulness mind goes on decreasing. Uh, its intensity also is gone and that brings us calmness, peace, relaxation, duality and And ultimately, that makes a person a better human being. So I've already created an audio for it so that you can listen to it regularly. And then you can, you, you know what are the content.